It's your boy High Five Vega back again, and this time I'm going to teach you how to test an amp. This will mainly be useful if you're testing an amp that you're buying secondhand. It could be an old school amp, it could be a fairly new amp, but anything you're buying secondhand, you probably want to test on the spot if you're making the deal in person, anyways. It if you're doing it online, then you know you have really no way to test it until it gets to you. So let's go over the list of things that we're going to need. First and foremost, you're going to need some sort of power source. You can use any 12 volt battery. It can be a, a very small one, just enough to give you some power. You can also use a power supply. A small power supply will work just fine for most amps. You're going to need some kind of wire. It does not have to be thick gauge wire. This is 12 gauge wire and this will be enough to power on the amps just to see if we're getting power. You're going to need a jumper wire to jump the remote. This will let you um, jump from your constant power to the remote just to get the anthem trigger on. You are going to need some way to get a source signal into the amplifier itself. The easiest way to do this is use one of these cables. It's a 3.5 millimeter to RCA. In my case, I'm going to use this iPad over here. It does still have a headphone jack, so it's easy enough for me to use that to uh, test the amp itself. Now that we've got that covered, you're basically gonna need a few, only a few more things. You're gonna need a speaker so you can test the channels to see if each channel is working properly. But also the speaker will come in handy when you're wanting to test a gain pot or a crossover switch or anything like that because you'll be able to hear the noise if you do have a sticky gain or a uh, switch that's making a little noise or something like that when you switch it. That's why it's also important or it's, it's more optional, but if you have some contact cleaner with you, it'd be very valuable to uh, use. The reason being is if you hear that scratchy gain, a lot of times, let me show you an example here. So the gain is right here. You could take this contact cleaner with a little straw and you could spray directly inside of there and see if that kind of loosens up and uh, goes away. If it does not, you probably need that gain pot replaced and depending on your level, you may or may not want to tackle that when you buy the amplifier. Outside of that, a screwdriver. You need just a Phillips and flathead. So in my case, it's easy enough to just swap these out. They make a lot of screwdrivers like this today. Harbor Freight sells one for a dollar, I think. But you'll need that for sure, you know, most of the time. Um, you may need some Allen wrenches. These amps do not have the Allen, but a lot of them do. These are a little bit older amps. A lot of them come with the Allen heads, so we won't need that today. We're just gonna jump straight into the testing now, and we'll kind of see step by step what we're gonna do to test these amps. The first amp we're gonna test will be this little Pioneer. I just done a dyno on this. If you haven't seen it, uh, check up in the corner. I'll leave a link so you can check out the amp dyno. This is a fantastic little amp. But we're gonna test this for functionality. Even though we know that it does work, we can uh, go ahead and go through the motions and see how well it works. So I'm gonna do a little time lapse video and we'll cut to me hooking it up. PCBWay has been a sponsor of this channel now for a few months and they're running their third PCB design contest. They're offering cash prizes for first, second, and third place. First place prize is $1,000 in cash plus prizes. If you're interested in entering this contest, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check that out. Remember the final submission date is by April 25th, 2020. So uh, please check it out, pcbway.com. Okay, so the amp is powered on. A few things to note. We did get power, so that's a very good first sign. You know that the amp will at least power up. I've adjusted the gains down a little bit just to start. We'll see where we're at. Make sure that your volume is not crazy high. You know, it's, it's pretty low because you don't want to just blast the speaker out. Channel A, we're going to test that for output, see what we get.
Okay, we have sound. It's working properly. The next step we're gonna do is we're going to turn the gain up with the volume up a little bit so we can hear if there's any sort of scratchiness. Let me go ahead and start another track and we'll see if we get any scratchiness in the gain. We had no noise in that game. That's a very good sign. It was crystal clear, so we know that channel A is working. Now, very important, in this amp, there was actually two gains. So we're gonna test the other channel, of course, as we would do in everything else, but we're also gonna test that gain just to make sure that that side is not a little bit scratchy. We're on to channel B. We're gonna test it exactly the same way. We're gonna play some music through the speaker, then we're going to adjust the gain and make sure that everything is working properly. So uh, let's get to it. Okay, we have sound. That's good. The sound sounds good. It's not, there's nothing wrong with the sound, so that's a good sign. Let's go ahead and adjust the gain and see if we get any kind of noises. Okay, so this amp is perfectly functioning. We've tested left channel, right channel. We've tried both the gains. We powered it up. Everything is working perfectly on this amp. The thing that this amp will not show you that I'm gonna show you in this other amp is what happens when an amp does not work? How does it react? Also, this amp does not have a crossover in it, so there's no switches to turn, there's no extra knobs, there's no frequency adjustment. So we're gonna jump over to the Sony Explode, which I already know has some problems. Uh, I happen to blow it up in the old school SPL challenge, but that's a story for another day. So let's get this all switched over to the Sony. We'll go through and see what it's like when an amp is not functioning. Now we're gonna test an amp that has a known issue Luckily enough for us, this does offer a power and protection light indicators right up top, easy to see, overcurrent, offset, and thermal. If I did not discharge the caps, you will see a spark coming from over here. If I did, then you shouldn't see anything, or if it's not powering at all, you should see nothing. Okay, I'm plugged in. We do not have anything. What could be the issue here? Is the amp just completely blown? You need to think about what could be, what the issues could be. And I did this on purpose. I went ahead and I left the 30 amp fuses out that go in here. So nothing's gonna happen with the fuses out. You may come across this when you're buying an amp where someone left the fuse out. Sometimes fuses are internal. That can happen as well, so that's an important thing to check. If you see no external fuses, check and see if it has something inside. You know, a Orion 2100 HCCA is the perfect example of something that has internal fuses that can blow. So I'm gonna unhook the negative terminal again. I will put in the fuses, and then we will see if we get any kind of reaction at all. The fuses are in, we're ready to try to power up. Once again, I will hook the negative up and we'll see if we get any reaction. Okay, we have power. All right, now I hope that you've seen that and heard that. We just got a offset. If you've seen the speaker, it kind of jumped up and you know that it's not working properly. We're gonna go ahead and try to run a track and see what it does anyways. I know this isn't gonna work, but let's just do it just for the sake of making a good video and trying. 
Okay, we are playing. We obviously have nothing. The speaker's not working. We are in protect. Another thing you should check, also a possibility of a blown fuse. So I'm gonna disconnect the negative terminal once again, and we'll pull the fuses out and see if we've got a blown fuse of some sort. I have pulled out the fuses and both these fuses are good. We have another issue with this amp. While I have this amp up here, I'm gonna show you a few things that I could not show you on the Pioneer. This amp, there's three adjustments on this one. Level, and then there's a bass boost and a crossover filter. With the speaker hooked up, you will want to try the low and the high pass filters to see if they work. That's the switch right here. You want to listen to that speaker as you select these over, seeing if you get any noise. That'll let you know if you have some kind of issue going on in here. It's dirty or whatever it is. You can use contact cleaner in here as well to try to clear that up if you brought it with you. Same thing goes for these three. You need to adjust these while you're listening to the speaker. See if you hear anything. If you don't hear anything, everything should be good to go. If you do hear something and it sounds like scratchiness, it's cutting in and out, try some contact cleaner in whichever adjustment is having the issue. Last but certainly not least, if everything is working and you're wanting to buy this amp, you'll just kind of visually inspect the amp and see if you notice anything off, dings or dents that you're not willing to live with and it's something you want to look at closely when you get the amplifier because you know sometimes if you're making a quick exchange someone off craigslist or facebook or something like that uh you might feel a little rushed or you might be rushed yourself to just get the transaction done with but you don't want to go home with an amp that you've seen only from this side only to turn it around and it's not the case on this amp but to see a big gouge or a bent fin or a collapsed corner from being dropped. Another thing to check, especially if you have these sort of terminal strip terminals, is to see if they are tight or loose. A lot of time these can get damaged in shipping. This is something you wanna check if you've bought your amp online, definitely, because that is an issue and it can cause an issue in the future. Same with the power. Everything is fine on that. And if you end up having an issue with the amp, specifically if you have noise in the switches or gains, having the contact cleaner with you will help you out a lot because you can try to troubleshoot that there and see if that is the issue. You may want to avoid it if you're not willing to, you know, put in that little bit of extra work to try to take the amp apart, clean it up on the inside and stuff like that. If you just want to pick it up and run it, make sure that it passed all your tests, the visual inspection, the power test, the speaker test, the adjustment test. Make sure that you check all those things off when you're buying the amp so that you're happy with your purchase and you have your best chance of getting a amplifier that is working as you expect it to. There's definitely times where you can do all these tests and still have an issue later. That goes double for old school amps. There's always something that can happen with an old school amp. You can have a swollen cap on the inside. If you did not open it up, you may not know that. If you are buying an old school amp, you might wanna take the time to open it up, check the caps, see what it looks like on the inside. It's, I, I mean, if you're buying an old school amp, try to do that definitely try to do that unless you're going to send it off and have it recapped and sometimes the board is so bad that it's not even worth um repairing or it's not worth the cost of finding parts and all that type of stuff so i hope this video helped you out if you like this type of stuff you know hit that thumbs up get in the comments and let me know what you do when you're testing an amp what are your methods do you do it the same as i do it do you do it differently? Is there anything that I forgot that I should have added in here? Let me know in the comments. I appreciate all of you, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Shout out to all my Patreon supporters, but a special shout out goes to Six Star and War members. 2001 Monolithic, The Third Era, Gene Nava, Joaquin Juarez, Paul Smith, Rick Quattlebaum, CT Sounds, Byron Chambliss, The Karate Guy, Jason Zemer, Travis McClendon, 
Brandon Hanna, William Bird, and Simple Man. For as little as $2 a month, you can join the team and get Patreon-exclusive content not available on YouTube. If you want to help me with my goal of reaching one new patron a month, check me out, patreon.com slash high five vega.